This is the 1996 Toyota Mega Cruiser, and it's by far the largest car or truck or thing for that matter that Toyota has ever produced. This thing makes a Tundra look like a legal midget. And that's really no surprise considering it weighs as much as a small city. 6,283 pounds to be exact. That's just a tad more than I weigh. to the Hummer H1, the Toyota Mega Cruiser was first developed purely for military use. This is the first iteration of the Mega Cruiser called the BXD-10. And it's estimated that only around 3,000 of these were built throughout the 1990s. But these are even still built to this day by Toyota per special request from the military. Now, Toyota thought the public might be interested in such a vehicle, so there was a civilian version developed called the BXD-20 which are very rare and very expensive. Only 149 of those were built between 95 and 02. It was supposed to be a sort of test mule for technology that would eventually trickle its way down the line into the Land Cruiser and other Toyota truck models, but that never happened and Toyota eventually killed it off in 2002 due to poor sales, which partially stemmed from the fact that they couldn't even fit them down Japanese streets. Then again, I barely do. Oh, and uh, the $223,000 price tag might have had something to do with it as well. Just maybe. So when the Japanese military was looking for some new wheels in the 90s, they turned to Toyota and it had very similar demands as the US military. So the Mega Cruiser got very similar answers as the Hummer H1. And because these are military vehicles, they have an insane amount of accessories to make them very durable and very capable off-road behemoths. While the Hummer H1 utilized a 6.5 liter naturally aspirated diesel V8, Toyota went for something a little bit different in the form of a four cylinder, but it's a 4100 cc 4.1 liter inline four cylinder turbo diesel engine codenamed the 15BT. It produces 153 horsepower and 282 foot-pounds of torque, which is surprising that it even moves the 6,000 pound behemoth. That power goes through a four-speed automatic ASIN transmission and two-speed transfer case, and then through front, rear, and center locking differentials, which then send the power down through factory portal axles. And for those of you that don't know what portal axles are, portal axles are basically a way to gain clearance at what is usually a vehicle's lowest point which is the axle center line. They're used on vehicles such as the Mercedes G-Wagon and use a series of gears to put power down to a lower point below the axle center line. Simply put, they're cool as f And now that the power's down to these massive Trojan Magnum sized 37 inch Bridgestone Dueler tires, we can move them through the Mega Cruiser's four wheel steering system, giving the Mega Cruiser a turning radius of just 18 feet. In comparison, a Toyota Camry can spin around in just 19 feet. And we can even inflate and deflate these tires on the fly with the Mega Cruiser's optionally equipped onboard air system. The Jeep Wrangler, a vehicle I love dearly because I own one, has six and a half inches less ground clearance than the Mega Cruiser, which has a whopping 16 and a half inches of ground clearance. I would try to measure and prove it to you guys, but that video would get deleted off of YouTube instantly. Now we move into the massive, plush, and luxurious interior that is of the Mega Cruiser. And there is quite literally not a whole lot to talk about in here. The first thing you notice is there is no sort of insulation on any of the walls. There's no headliner. There's nothing back there. It's just raw steel. It does hold three people. I have no idea where the poor sap that sits in the middle seat is gonna have to put his legs. I'm not gonna climb into that seat and, and show you guys. I'm six foot five, there's no way. Yeah, no. Now the interior here, of course, is very similar to the Hummer H1 with its Suze Canal width transmission tunnel that's longer than some people that I know. We have the console mounted shifter down here, 
that looks like it came out of a 95 Camry. That's because it did. And while your car has a 27 inch high definition 4K touchscreen Apple CarPlay radio, this one has that. Again, not very much to look at on the dash. We have our front center and rear differential locks here, our four wheel drive controls, headlights, turn signals, and that's pretty much it. Well, some mega cruisers were outfitted as transport carriers. They could fit as many as 14 people in the back here. This one is more of a utility one, more of a pickup, and still has all the spots where they mounted turrets and machine guns. Now, driving the mega cruiser, the first thing you notice is just how loud it is. It's quite loud in here. Now, I'm actually not sure if I have to yell or not for you guys to hear me in here because it is honestly very, very loud. There's no headliner or door panels or anything to insulate the interior from both sound. And another lovely thing, temperature. In case you couldn't notice from the profuse sweating from my face, and other areas. It's a little bit hot in here. It's about 90 degrees outside and the Mega Cruiser doesn't have air conditioning. I always pick the best vehicles to review on the hottest days. Luckily, however, there are giant holes in the floorboard to let blood drain out. They're called blood holes, but they're also acting as a nice updraft of air going up my leg. It feels rather nice. The Mega Cruiser actually isn't all over the place on the road as I was expecting. You think military type vehicle like this, you'd be screwed. Why would it need to perform well on the road? It doesn't. But I am pleasantly surprised because it really doesn't behave on the road that bad. You just have to remember to take into account the half mile of vehicle you have on the other side so that you don't destroy every single oncoming vehicle in the other lane. Especially driving this being right hand drive, you have to literally hug the white line because you have so much vehicle on that side even when you're touching the white line, you're almost touching the double yellow. I'm also pleasantly surprised by the amount of power. It's more torque for that matter. When you get going from a stop, it's actually peppy, dare I say. It like gets up and goes. Then again, first gear in this is geared very, very low. It's more of like a crawling gear almost. But the old girl does run out of steam rather quickly on the highway. It's not like you want to be going very fast in a 6,200 pound behemoth like this. But when you do realize you're going too fast and need to use the brakes, well, you're kind of shit out of luck because they don't really work all that well. But what does work very well is the exhaust brake. Watch this. Oh, 